it's not cheating buying something to make your sauce better. I remember once at Sats I made a dal so bad. If they're not available, they're not on the menu. I pummel it into the food. Like wherever I can, I will absolutely annihilate it. It just makes me happy to see like nice, simple things done well. Hello, I'm Chris and this is Tastemakers where we seek to get to the bottom of how chefs understand flavour. Today we're going to visit Liam Nichols at Store in Norfolk and he's going to cook us one of the dishes off his menu, the katsu scallop. We're going to see what he does differently to get incredible depth into his sauce. We're also going to get to find out what happened after Sat Baines threw his dal in the bin. Do we just go? Just go. Just go? Yeah, okay. We, we do simply start off with some shallots and carrots. It already smells good. Like yeah, the the sesame then, oil that you've got in there. Yeah, always start with sesame oil. I don't know what it is. It, it just has that amazing like uh, aroma, flavor. So again, we're just trying to build like, all the flavors. So we go in with garlic, we go in with ginger, um, and lemongrass. So sometimes I use lemongrass in a form of infusing it. Yeah. Sometimes I will blend it. I have a little product that I buy from the Chinese supermarket, like crispy chili oil. Mm. I put a spoon of that in. And it's not, I've come to this point um, where it's, it's not cheating buying something to make your sauce better. That flavor is what someone at home isn't putting into their katsu yeah. sauce. And their spices right. have probably been in their cupboards for about 10 years. Exactly. Well. These are super yeah. fresh. Right? Yeah, well we do churn through them and that's the thing about being in a restaurant is you, you, you churn through produce. So it is often just fresher, fresher, fresher. So again, Tommy paste, a little bit of sweating down. Then I'm just gonna add some curry powder. I do add saffron. I know it's not traditional. Um, it's not meant to taste of saffron at the end. It's still meant to taste like katsu, but it adds great color. Um, a little bit of coriander seed, coriander, ground coriander, coriander seed is one of my favorite things to eat on the planet. Um, like fried chicken with ground coriander and paprika is still one of my like all time classics. A little bit of turmeric, again, we're not trying to make this taste like an Indian based curry, but we are trying to give it that color and give it just layers of flavor, hopefully. This is quite hot. Um, we often do this as the first course. We're not looking to blow people's socks off here. And then I, I a whole tin of coconut milk. Is going in. Um, I do throw in kaffir lime. They are I mean, the biggest kaffir the, lime memes. I they're think. massive. Aren't they? Where'd you get these from? Just Easter's legendary Peter <laughs> Easter. But the, the the just when you get these in the kitchen and you open that packet, it's just like wild. Again, we're not looking to make it taste like kaffir lime. We're just there to sort of add another dimension to the curry. They will come out before the blend. And then I just throw in some. Um, coriander leaves, coriander stalks as well. Yeah. They go in, they will be blended through. So mm -hmm. at this present moment in time, the only thing that's not gonna go in the blender is the two kaffir lime leaves. Okay. Can I, can I flick? Yeah, let's go. I know this sauce, no matter what, is gonna be um, red slash orange at the <laughs> end. Um, yeah, I do throw the coriander in early doors. Mm. I'm just gonna make like a raw slaw. Cause it is that thing about like, you know, what, what is on a traditional katsu? If you go to Wagamama's, yeah, shredded carrot. So it's just simply, some sliced cabbage, some sliced carrot, lime juice. I think citrus plays like acid is hitting everything. It's lemon juice, it's lime juice, it's, it could come in grapefruit juice, it could come in Chardonnay vinegar, red wine vinegar, rice wine vinegar. I, I pummel it into the food. Like wherever I can, I will absolutely annihilate it. And, and um, squid brown fish sauce. And then the scallops themselves. So we only use hand dives. Um, if they're not available, they're not on the menu. It's as simple as that. We simply just change yeah. it. We don't yeah. fuck about with tub scallops. I just like the, I think the romantic story with these is there's, there's a nice man in a wetsuit in Scotland who's gone down, handpicked it, brought it up, and then sent it to here. And then I have the pleasure of like prepping them. Yeah, I mean, so, they're just such a different product. I love they? them. I love them to bits. They're perfect for what we, what we do here. So we just salt, um, neutral oil, that's just veg oil in that, nothing wild. Um, we just plonk them on there and we, 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 that's kind of it. They don't really, <laughs> they don't really have much else to say. And they're developing a really nice colour. So I love them. They smell as well. 
Oh, I love it. It's just like, they're just nice, aren't they? So, yeah, the dish assembly. So, first in, we're just gonna go with that katsu sauce, lightly finished with a bit of smoked herring roe. The herring roe is there just for a little nod to like luxury, you know? The nice little mouthfeel it can offer. The scallop sits in, sauce comes up against it. That lightly seasoned slaw, and then just a nice bit of green coriander oil. I know everyone goes wild for green oils everywhere, but you know, when they have a purpose, you know, they're, they're brilliant. And then just that lime zest on the finish. So that is sort of a dish that we would do quite a lot in the restaurant. That's fantastic. I mean, there's no bullshit there. I, 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 I like, like there, there's nothing wild. I like to think we make a nice green coriander oil. We can hopefully make a nice sauce. We, we season the slaw and we cook a scallop. It's horrible cooking for chefs. It's horrible eating in front of a camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Keeps coming, that. Mm. Really fresh. Makes me happy. This is, it is the citrus. Yeah. It's coming through that that last hit of lime juice. Um, that is very much like you've arrived. <laughs> yeah. And that is first course in. Yeah. We often do that first course in. Yeah. How how a dish like this is made. I mean, I could look at this and go, yeah, katsu sauce. We've all had that before. Scallop, like lovely. We're going to buy the best scallops. Why the slaw? Um, it's again, it's a classic. Like you do see like shredded carrot on a katsu curry with, with like chicken when you go out. You're like, if you can just sort of like, you know, instead of it being a badly cut julienne, like really nice, fine julienne mixed with a bit of cabbage for that crunch, um, nicely seasoned and then, you know, make it look pretty with that green coriander oil and like hit it like with that zest. It's like, boom, you've got something that's like. Yeah. I mean, what I see is nice. a lot of intent. Like you, yeah. You've, not put anything on there that is kind of like a an easy win, like chefies. You've not put on like microherbs and flowers and stuff. No, and I do have a bit of a thing with microherbs. I know we've touched on it briefly before, but it's we don't. Have, me and Hazel don't have time. <laughs> like the thing is, is we are literally two chefs cooking for sixteen people a night, uh, one course after the next. Yeah. Like it's like as soon as this goes, we're then plating up the beetroot course, which runs behind it. Mm -hmm. Like but the beetroot course has also got to go, and then we're working on the French onion soup course behind that. So there's no time to put things on individually, like microherb tweezered on. We just kind of put food on that hopefully, like, like is all in the prep, that yeah, is yeah. tasty and it, it, it goes. Um, and putting microherbs, when I see chefs put microherbs on hot dishes. <laughs> You're like, oh. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh. You can see it going like this. On. Yeah, it's just like, oh. And then they just take it from the punnet, it comes in and just mic drop it on. <laughs> you know, I sometimes use mustard cress. Yeah. You know the stuff you put in an egg and cress sandwich that's like dirt cheap, has that mild mustardy flavor. Yeah. And it looks quite pretty when you mic drop that onto a dish. I do sometimes like do that, but that's sort of as far as I go when it comes to that. I like a nasturtium leaf. They, I mean, we you don't need many here. of those though, do you? Exactly, those, they're, they're... we grow them here. We, 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 and then it's like two of them on, yeah. a, on a beef. And they, they don't die. They're quite resilient to like heat, but they're on a nice like, again, the beetroot dish, we put like a nice nasturtium on it. And I'm like, I like that because it's pretty. It's got flavor. Yeah, and specific. And it's there and to be a reason, yeah. yeah. It just makes me happy to see like nice, simple things done well. Yeah. That's what I like. Yeah, and that's almost what cooking is, right? It's yeah. just loads of little simple yeah. steps. Yeah. Each one probably isn't, I mean, there must be some, probably more in pastry that are just like really intricate and difficult, but each one by itself isn't that difficult. Yes. We're putting it all together, together in a coherent way that gets to the caring plate. Caring about every step for me is yeah. like, the thing, yeah. the thing that I really like, love doing. And then this kind of emerges from that. Yeah, like exactly. You, yeah, you just, exactly. you have that principle that guides yeah. you, and if you follow yeah. it, you end up with something wonderful. It's a beautiful building, like we're very lucky to be in here. It's got some history, like back in 1814, this is where Coleman's mustard was first milled. Really? Like, yeah, yeah, Jeremiah Coleman. That's why this room's called store. Probably should start with this. Um, Cause it used to be the storeroom for the mustard seeds. Oh, that's incredible. That's how the name sort of was like evolved. It was like, this was the storeroom, we'll call it the store. Um, yeah, Coleman's started here. So my story is I was in Chile when COVID happened. Yeah, okay. Uh, which was March, 2020. Mm -hmm. um, seeing friends, 
Uh, but eventually, like, my parents were like, you need to come home. I was like, I don't want to come home. It looks shit anyway. <laughs> uh, all I keep seeing on the news is there's no toilet roll there. Um, so, but eventually came home. I moved it back in with my parents at the age of 28, which is obviously depressing in its own right. Um, I started selling bread around the village. I made 16 loaves of sourdough in my parents' kitchen a day, sold them for two pound a loaf, and that was my job. Nice. I had no furlough, no nothing, because I was yeah. just flown back in. Um, and that was it. But then I sort of teamed up with Andy and Ludo, who own the restaurant here, mm -hmm. to do takeaways from the mill. And it was a bit of a, we'd just done a load of takeaways. One Friday night, we used to do fish and chips. I think we were all sat in this room, just, oh. Yeah. We were like, should we turn this room into its own little restaurant? <laughs> um, we all sort of said, yeah. So, so. Yeah. Really good idea, guys. Um, I remember once at Sats, I made a doll so bad. <laughs> You offended him. He <laughs> threw it straight in the bin. But like, do you know what he did? He stood next to me for the next sort of hour and a half and yeah. showed me how to make it. Wow. You know, he didn't just call me an arsehole and let me make another bad one. Like, he stood there and he showed me. That's like, so important. Like, took time out of his day um, yeah. to show me how to do it. And I was like, yeah, like, incredible. <laughs>